Prior to beginning the scenario, instruct your partner to obtain vitals once patient contact is made. Have your partner obtain blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, oxygen saturations, blood glucose levels, a 3 lead, 12 lead, as well obtain IV access of your choosing depending on the nature of the patient. Instruct your partner to inform you when they are finished and have them record their vitals on a piece of paper. Ensure you are wearing proper body substance isolation. Ensure the scene is safe by assessing for people, odors, pets, pathway, gas, glass, wire, and fires. Determine the mechanism of injury or nature of illness. And assess for the number of patients. Request additional help if required. Obtain a general impression. Approach the patient obtain consent, and determine level of consciousness, and for presence of a patent airway. Assess the patient's breathing. Assess the breathing by auscultating the apices bilaterally, as well as the bases. Normal breath sounds are equal and clear bilaterally. Now assess for the presence of pulse at both the carotid and radial arteries. Assess to ensure they are equal and of adequate rate, rhythm, and strength. Assess the skin for color and temperature. Perform a wet check, assessing for bleeding or incontinence, and make a transport decision. Now begin assessing the patient by asking his signs and symptoms, allergies, medications, past medical history, his last oral intake, and events leading up to the emergency. If the patient is complaining of pain, determine the onset. Determine whether anything makes it better or worse. Ask the patient what it feels like and to describe it. Ask if the pain goes anywhere or radiates. Assess for the severity by using a scale of 1 to 10. Also determine the time the pain began. Assess the patient's head for any abnormal signs. Assess the pupils to see if they are equal and reactive to light. Assess the neck. Lean the patient forward and assess all lung fields in the back. Assess the patient's abdomen. Assess for the presence of distension, rigidity, or any tenderness. The lower extremities for the presence of peripheral edema. Assess the pedal pulses and ensure they are equal and of adequate rate, rhythm, and strength. And assess both extremities for the presence of motor function and sensation. Now assess the upper extremities by determining grip strength. Both grip strengths should be equal. Then assess radial pulses. The radial pulses should also be equal and of adequate rate, rhythm, and strength. Assess for the presence of sensation and motor function in both extremities. At this point, your partner should have obtained a full set of vitals and attached your patient to an ECG. Print an ECG strip.
review the strip and assess for any obvious abnormalities or apparent deviations from baseline. With this information, determine a differential diagnosis. In this case, the patient is complaining of sudden onset substernal chest pain that isn't relieved with any positioning. He describes it as a crushing pain that radiates into his jaw and down his left arm. He states it's 6 on 10 and began about 15 minutes ago. With this information, you arrive at a differential diagnosis of acute coronary syndrome. You begin by administering 160 milligrams of ASA. Ensure the patient has no allergy, that they don't have asthma made worse by ASA, or an active GI bleed. Ensure it is the correct medication, the correct dose, and confirm the order with your partner. Deliver the medication by giving the patient two capsules. Instruct the patient to chew it, not just swallow. Allow the patient to chew the medication. Take note of the time and record it for documentation. The next medication you will administer is nitroglycerin. Ensure the patient has no allergy to nitro. As well, ensure that the blood pressure was within parameters established by local protocol. Ensure the patient has not taken any erectile dysfunction drugs and that it is the correct medication and is not expired. Confirm the dose is 0.4 milligrams with your partner and instruct the patient that this medication will be delivered under their tongue. Prime the medication. And deliver it under the patient's tongue. Record the time for documentation and initiate transport. During transport, assess to see if your treatment has made any changes to the patient's severity of pain, including pulse and blood pressure. Ensure your blood pressure consistently remains with parameters established by local protocol. If at all possible, assess blood pressure by auscultation. If pain is still present and your vitals remain within the limits established by local protocol, administer a second dose of 0.4 milligrams of nitroglycerin. Again, record the time for documentation. If at any point, oxygen saturations dip below 92% on room air, administer oxygen, in this case via nasal cannula. Set the appropriate flow rate, and monitor saturations for desired effect. While en route to the receiving facility, deliver a radio patch. For example, XMZ206 Ambulance 123 is inbound with a 60-year-old male patient. Patient is complaining of substernal chest pain and on scene rated the pain as 6 on 10. We've administered 160 milligrams of ASA as well as 2 times nitroglycerin. Patient currently rates the pain at a 4 on 10. Blood pressure is 122 on 86, heart rate is 74 regular, respiratory rate of 16, and O2 saturations are 98%. ECG is showing sinus rhythm with no gross abnormalities or deviations from baseline. ETA is 5 minutes. Over. To assess saturation, attach a sat probe to a finger. Then observe saturations and interpret the results. Turn off the regulator. And remove it from the oxygen tank. Properly store your used cylinder and retrieve a full cylinder. 
face the cylinder port away from you and bleed off the oxygen tank, blowing off any debris. And attach your regulator. Once the regulator is attached tightly, turn on your oxygen tank. Once you've ensured your oxygen tank is securely attached to the regulator, bleed off any additional air. To deliver oxygen, Attach your desired mask to the oxygen regulator. Turn on the cylinder and select your desired amount of liters per minute. To perform bag mask ventilations, attach the BVM to oxygen. Place your patient in a head tilt chin lift and using a CE grip, seal the pocket mask to the patient's face. Deliver a ventilation over one second. And for rescue breathing, repeat this once every five seconds. To perform a head tilt chin lift, press down with two fingers on the forehead while simultaneously lifting up with two fingers on the mandible. To perform a jaw thrust, place the thenar on the zygomatic arch. Then, using your index fingers, pull the mandible upward. Place the thenar on the zygomatic arch. Use your fingers to push the mandible forward while tilting the head back. Place one hand on the forehead. With your other hand, grasp the tongue and mandible and pull it upward. Measure the tip of the device from the corner of the mouth to the tragus. Then, using a cross finger technique, open the patient's mouth. Suction the oropharynx for 10 to 15 seconds. Using both hands, use a standard CE grip to seal the mask to the patient's face. Now deliver a ventilation over one second. For rescue breathing, repeat this process once every five seconds. Locate the patient's cricoid ring and apply downward pressure to occlude the esophagus. Assess the patient's level of consciousness. Perform a head tilt chin lift and assess for the presence of breathing and pulse. If pulse is absent, begin CPR. Call for assistance. Perform 30 chest compressions. Deliver two ventilations. Repeat the cycle of 30 chest compressions and two ventilations until assistance arrives. For a choking conscious patient, perform five firm back blows. If the object still remains, perform five abdominal thrusts. Continue this procedure until the obstruction is cleared or the patient becomes unconscious.
Assess level of consciousness. Open airway. Assess for breathing for 5 to 10 seconds. If breathing is absent, attempt ventilation with a BVM. If ventilation does not go in, readjust and attempt ventilation again. If the second ventilation does not go in, begin chest compressions. Have your partner begin 30 chest compressions. When 30 chest compressions are complete, assess for present of obstruction in the airway. If not seen, attempt ventilation. If ventilation does not go in, readjust and attempt ventilation a second time. Begin chest compressions. Continue this sequence until successful or transportation is initiated. Assess level of consciousness. Perform head tilt chin lift and assess for presence of breathing and circulation. If absent, begin 30 chest compressions. Have your partner prepare an OPA and a BVM. After 30 compressions, have your partner deliver two ventilations. Continue 30 compressions. Attempt to achieve a compression rate of 100 compressions per minute. Continue the ratio of 30 chest compressions to 2 ventilations for 5 cycles, then switch compressors. Assess for level of consciousness. Open the airway and assess for breathing and pulse. If pulse is absent, deliver 15 chest compressions. Instruct your partner to insert an OPA and after 15 chest compressions are delivered, have your partner deliver two ventilations. Continue chest compressions. Continue chest compressions and aim for a rate of 100 compressions per minute at a ratio of 15 and 2 with two rescuers. The compression depth should be 1 to one and a half inches. Establish a level of consciousness. Open the airway using a head tilt chin lift and check for breathing. If breathing is absent, attempt ventilations with a bag valve mask. Assess pulse. If pulse is absent, begin CPR. Aim for a rate of over 100 per minute with a ratio of 30 and 2. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check for any known allergies, contraindications, or incompatibilities. Check the medication for the correct medication and expiration date. Also verify the patient will be able to safely ingest the oral medication. Measure the correct volume. Position the patient in a semi-fowler or high-fowler position. Give the medication to the patient and instruct the patient to swallow or chew. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check for any known allergies, contraindications, and incompatibilities. Check the medication for correct medication and expiration date. Prime the medication 
and deliver it under the patient's tongue. To withdraw medication from a vial, you will need a sharps container, needles, alcohol pads, a vial, and a syringe. Make sure the medication is the correct and check the expiry date. Remove the protective cap and swab with an alcohol wipe. Prepare your syringe and blunt needle. Draw back the desired amount of medication and inject that air into the vial. Withdraw the desired amount of medication Remove the blunt needle and attach an appropriate size needle for your desired injection. To withdraw medication from an ampule, you will need a sharps container, needles, an ampule, gauze pad, and a syringe. Check for the correct medication, clarity, expiration date, and concentration. Prepare your syringe and blunt needle. Use an alcohol swab or 2x2 gauze to remove the top of the ampule. To remove fluid from the top, flick or spin the ampule. To remove the top, point the dot facing outward from you. Dispose of the top in a sharps container. To withdraw, insert your blunt needle. Pull back on the plunger and remove any air bubbles from the syringe. Replace your needle with an appropriate size needle for your desired injection. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check the medication for correct medication and expiration date. Snap off the cap and insert into the spacer. Shake the inhaler well. Place in front of the patient's mouth and instruct the patient to exhale for. Then place the mouthpiece in the patient's mouth. Instruct the patient to close lips around the mouthpiece with tongue under the mouthpiece. Press the bottle and mouthpiece together quickly as the patient inhales. Then instruct the patient to hold their breath for 5 to 10 seconds. Repeat in 5 to 10 minutes or as instructed. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check for any known allergies, contraindications, and incompatibilities. Check the medication for correct medication, clarity, expiration date, 
and concentration. Calculate the correct medication dose and measure the correct volume of medication into the syringe. Select the appropriate injection site for subcutaneous injection. Cleanse the site appropriately. Pinch the skin around the site and introduce the needle bevel up at a 45 degree angle in a quick motion. Pull back on the plunger to aspirate and check for the presence of blood, and then administer the medication. Dispose of the sharp in a sharps container. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check for any known allergies, contraindications, and incompatibilities. Check the medication for correct medication, clarity, expiration date, and concentration. Calculate the correct medication dose and measure the correct volume of medication into the syringe. Appropriately position your patient and select the appropriate injection site. Cleanse the site appropriately. Hold the skin taut around the site and introduce the needle bevel up at a 90 degree angle in one quick motion. Pull back on the plunger to aspirate and verify the absence of blood. Administer the prescribed medication and withdraw needle and dress the injection site. Dispose of the sharp in a sharps container. For an IV, you will need a saline lock, 10cc syringe, tape, a 2x2 dressing, a tourniquet, IV catheter, a tagoderm, and an alcohol swab. Explain the procedure to the patient and check to ensure that your IV solution is the proper fluid, clarity, and expiration date. Identify and select the appropriate equipment. Prepare your saline lock by connecting it to a 10 mil preload. Flush the saline lock with 2 cc's of saline. Prepare your tagoderm. Place a tourniquet on the patient's arm. Once tourniquet is in place, prepare your remaining equipment. Prepare tape. Ensure you have enough length to properly secure your IV. After selecting the appropriate site, cleanse the area with an alcohol wipe. Select the appropriate size catheter. Insert catheter at an approximate 45 degree angle until you see flashback. Remove the stylet. Remove the tourniquet. Place the tagoderm over the injection site. Prepare your saline flush. Occlude the vein proximal to the catheter. And attach your saline lock. A 
Assess for patency by flushing 5 cc's of normal saline through your saline lock. Then lock the device. After patency is confirmed, secure the site with tape. Observe your patient for any desired or adverse side effects and ensure sharps are disposed in a proper container. Confirm the order for the medication and explain the procedure to the patient. Check for any known allergies, contraindications, or incompatibilities. Check the medication for the correct medication, clarity, expiration date, and concentration. Unscrew the nebulizer to expose the medication cup and place the medication inside the cup. Reattach the nebulizer mask. Attach oxygen tubing. and select the appropriate flow rate, usually between 6 and 8 liters per minute. Once a mist has formed, attach the mask to the patient. To select an OPA, measure from the corner of the mouth to the tragus. To insert, follow the hard palate, rotating 180 degrees when the soft palate is met. Remove the OPA by following the patient's anatomy. To select an MPA, measure from the corner of the nose to the tragus. Apply lubricating jelly to the MPA. Insert the MPA, bevel towards the septum until the distal end is at the nostril. When inserting on the left nostril, you may notice some resistance. Simply wiggle the MPA until the distal end is at the nostril. Remove the MPA by pulling out slowly, following the patient's anatomy. Identify and select the appropriate equipment. Ensure your laryngoscope light is bright and secure. Place the patient's head in a sniffing position. And insert the laryngoscope into the vallecula. Visualize the obstruction. Insert McGill forceps in a closed position. And grasp the object with the McGill forceps and remove the obstruction. Observe for return of spontaneous respirations for five seconds. If respirations do not resume, begin ventilation with a BVM. For this insertion, you will need oxygen, a bag valve mask, a stethoscope, a King LT, lube 
lubricant. Tube tie. A 60cc syringe. An end tidal CO2 detector. And suction. Instruct your partner to pre-oxygenate the patient for two minutes and auscultate lung sounds to establish a baseline. Select the appropriate size tube. Attach a syringe to the inflation line and test the tube for leakage. Lubricate the tube tip and pharyngeal balloon with water-soluble jelly. Remove the OPA and perform a tongue jaw lift. Insert the device until resistance is met. Inflate inflation line with 60 cc's of air. Attach your color metric device and the BVM. Begin giving a ventilation while slightly pulling back on the tube until compliance is met. Confirm tube placement by auscultation and color metric detector. Once confirmed, secure the tube with a tube tie. To insert a gastric tube, Measure from the xiphoid process to the corner of the mouth, then to the tragus. This will be the length of tube you will insert. Now insert the tube in the distal port of the King LT. To suction the oropharynx, turn on your suction. To apply suction, cover the open port on the Yonker catheter. Insert the catheter into the mouth and occlude the port to apply suction. Suction for about 10 to 15 seconds. Ensure you hyperoxygenate the patient before and during the procedure and repeat suction on the opposite side if needed. Hyperoxygenate your patient with 100% oxygen and prepare the suction catheter. To apply suction, cover the open port with a finger. Insert the suction catheter and apply suction. Attach your BVM and continue ventilation. To remove the King LT, deflate the cuff. Remove the tube tie and roll the patient to their side. Remove the King LT and suction the oropharynx as required.
To assess a radial pulse, palpate the radial artery for 15 seconds. To assess a femoral pulse, locate the femoral artery and palpate for 15 seconds as well. To assess a carotid pulse, palpate for the carotid artery, assess for 15 seconds. To assess respirations, monitor the patient's chest rise. You should observe the chest rise for 30 seconds. Multiply by 2 to determine respiratory rate for a minute. Select the appropriate BP cuff and apply it to the upper arm so that the bottom edge of the cuff is approximately 1 inch above the AC fossa. Palpate the radial artery and begin inflating the cuff. Inflate the cuff until the radial pulse disappears, being careful not to overinflate. Release pressure at a controlled rate, verbalizing the systolic pressure on palpation. To measure blood pressure by auscultation, palpate the brachial artery. Once located, apply your stethoscope and begin inflating the cuff. Inflate the cuff until you can no longer hear a heartbeat. Then at a controlled rate of two millimeters of mercury a second, Continue to listen until the heart rate returns. Once you hear it, this is your systolic blood pressure. Continue releasing pressure until you can no longer hear the heart rate. This is your diastolic. Apply the BP cuff so that the bottom edge is approximately one inch above the AC fossa. Turn on your monitor and press start. Assemble the proper equipment. Remove a test strip and place it in the glucometer. Cleanse the site appropriately. Using a lancet, puncture the skin. Obtain a blood sample on the test strip and interpret the reading on the monitor. First perform a brief neurological assessment. Select the appropriate size collar and position it around the patient's neck. Secure the collar with a Velcro strap and confirm proper placement. Repeat neurological assessment and ensure no deficits were created. Have your partner assume C-spine control and apply a rigid cervical collar. Get a backboard and slide it behind the patient from the side.
Work with your partner to continuously maintain spinal control. Place an arm under the patient's shoulders and begin lowering the patient to the ground. Obtain spinal control. And center the patient onto the board. Begin strapping the patient to the spine board. Start with the chest. Have the patient take a deep breath while tightening. Now immobilize the pelvis. Tighten the straps across the iliac crest. Now immobilize the legs to the board. Immobilize the patient's head by using the head blocks. Instruct your partner to immobilize the helmet and head in an inline position. Remove the chin strap. Obtain spinal control by grasping the patient's mandible and placing a hand under the patient's neck as your partner removes the helmet. Once removed, instruct your partner to obtain C-spine. and place the patient in a rigid cervical collar. Direct your partner to place and maintain the patient's head in a neutral inline position. Apply an appropriately sized rigid cervical collar. Position the PD pack Perform a log roll and assess the patient's back. Place the patient on the PD pack and center the patient appropriately. Begin attaching the patient to the PD pack, beginning with the chest, shoulder straps, pelvis. legs, and feet. Secure the patient's head and assess motory sensory function of the extremities. Explain the procedure to the patient and expose and examine the injured extremity. Direct your partner to maintain manual stabilization of the injured leg and assess motor, sensory, and distal circulation in the injured extremity. Prepare and adjust the splint to the proper length and position the splint next to the patient's leg.
attach the groin strap. Apply mechanical traction and position and secure the supporting straps. To apply a 3 lead, expose the patient's chest. Attach the cables to monitoring electrodes. And clean the area where the leads are to be applied if required, such as shave hair, wipe off sweat, etc. Apply the black lead to the left shoulder and the red lead to the left lower abdomen. Apply the white lead to the right shoulder. Print a strip and interpret the findings. Explain the procedure to the patient and identify and prepare all the required equipment. Prepare the chest and landmark appropriately. Place V1 at the fourth intercostal space right of the sternum. V2 in the fourth intercostal space left of the sternum. V3 goes in the fifth intercostal space between V2 and V4. V4 goes in the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line and V5 goes in the 5th intercostal space between V4 and V6. V6 goes in the 5th intercostal space at the mid-auxiliary line. Obtain a 12 lead, click the 12 lead button and ensure the patient remains still. Acquire the 12 lead and select the appropriate settings. A strip will print automatically. Analyze the 12 lead and transmitted as appropriate. 